welcome to Esports Connected. I'm your host, Megan Van Petten, and today we have a very special ringmaster as our guest, the one and only Esports Circuit, Jeffrey Weiss. Weiss, but <laughs> Jeffrey Weiss. Hey, thanks, Megan. So happy to be here. So excited to be on your on your show. I've been I've been all year I've been saying, I'm gonna get on her podcast. She's a, she's a great, she's a great talker. <laughs> I've been told. Well, you look fabulous. And Thank there was you. some there was some there was some buzz in the green room about your shoes. Yeah, I got my shoes. I got these. <laughs> Even my shoes are gold. Wow. I got gold shoes, golden pants, golden got got rings and rings, watches. Wrist, my, my, my gold bracelet, golden jacket, pants. I'm, I'm not going to take, I'm not going to show you my underwear. <laughs> you never disappoint. You never disappoint. So, yeah, I mean, it's just always so much fun when I see that you're on an agenda or a calendar or a, an event list. I always yeah. know that I, 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 I always know that it's going to be an adventure. You're going to be dressed for it. Um, I know you love your fine suits and you like cosplay. And most importantly, you love entertainment and you love, you're a broadcast engineer and you're an award-winning um, STEM. Uh, you're, you're awarded for your, some of your work yeah, in actually, STEM. Yeah, last year was like our first year really in business. We, we started in 2019, but 2020 was our first year. What a year. And, but yeah, we, we, uh, we, we laid out a program and the stem.org uh, looked at us and we had to do all the song and dances and all this stuff and paperwork. And the committee went back and said, these guys have a great program. Let's get, and, and they, they gave us the STEM award. We were also spotlighted by Fast Company, uh, Fast Company Magazine as a, one of the innovative companies, up and coming innovative company to look at and world changing idea. Uh, from them, and we also got uh, looked at by. We also got mentioned in uh, with Barons as uh, as uh, next big thing in esports. So wow! Well, congratulations. Thank Tell you. Tell me a little bit about what you know what what your program was awarded for. Well, I've been involved in STEM education and stuff for many years. I, I worked with the Society of Motion Picture and Television Engineers. I was on a board member, I was a treasurer, secretary, all this stuff, helping support all of the things that they do for the standards for the motion picture industry. And during those things, we used to have these little network lunches where all the top executives, like the head of production for Warner Brothers and the head of post-production for Disney and all this would come to these events. We'd get these graduate students and we'd get them together in lunches and we'd sit down and network and we had some great times. So, that was my, that, you know, and, and we've done a lot of work in helping students get jobs and get in and get that. And the, the layout thing, the way of working out to invite kids, when we go to our esports thing, go to, a, go to a home college or a town, we show up and we invite the colleges to be a part of our program, not just come and play and pay us money to play, but actually come be a part of the program, make money being a part of the program and learning and educating them about how, how broadcasting works, how production works, how data science works, all these things that, that are other parts of esports that they don't do. And they're getting some of that in their colleges in classes, but this is in a real physical working environment where they can actually learn and get experience and work in the industry. Wow, that, that's great. How long have you been doing this and what happened with COVID and congratulations oh. for surviving? <laughs> yes. Well, you know, the, the, the key word to, in, in any business is the word pivot. You know, every, comp, every great company pivoted. And so we're, we started this, you know, in 2020, we had our first event in January and it was a fabulous event. We were at the NAM show, the North American Music Merchant Show. We had a thousand people play in our tournaments. And we had many more than that come by and look and see what we're doing and experience and learn about esports. And then we had our, we were part of the DreamHack conference in February. That was exciting. They were happy to see us. We were a big mm -hmm. part of that. We had a broadcast center and some other things we did there. And we were going around there doing, doing uh, media stuff and it was great. And then we had five events scheduled last year. And of course, 
you know, the last event was the end of March and the end of March cut us off. And so we told everybody we were sorry, we'll be back hopefully next year. And, but we pivoted the company and we started to, look, to work with schools to help them build out their gaming centers. And that's something I wanna talk more about in this, in, in this, in this conversation. Because I think, you know, we've got an idea, you know, we've got some really creative ideas of how schools can really game change from what they're doing now to what they could do in the future. Well, let's hear about it. Well, so nowadays, the way we, the way most schools work is they have like a game center and they have a bunch of computers sitting on desks next to, next to a kid. And that is all kinds of problems. First of all, if the computer breaks down, it can take up to an hour or so to replace the computer. Uh, 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 expensive, you know, five thousand dollar computer sitting next to a kid is a dangerous thing. Uh, we've had some kids who have loaded up all kinds of bad stuff on these computers, and you know, malware and other stuff that, that I don't want to mention online that was really bad. And and, and so it's a, it's a really a risk. It's a really and then people could steal stuff. People could vandalize stuff. You know, kids get upset because they got shot in the head. They bang the computer. Next thing you know, you have a you have a four thousand dollar paperweight. Uh, you know, stuff like that. So what we do is we have things where we like do distance-based KVM systems. We would actually take the computers and put them in the data center of the school or in a rack in the game center. That way the school can just hit, like if they need a new computer, they can just hit three keys and they got a new computer. Or, and they can move around the computers very easily. If they want to go to the cafeteria or they want to go to the stadium, they just bring a keyboard, mouse and monitor and the computer stays where it is and they just plug it into the network and they got their computer all set. So that's kind of one thing. Also, we're working with virtualized computers, data centers, creating computers, a virtual computer. So you don't actually have to have a computer. You just you, you just pay a monthly rent and you and you rent systems from a data center. We're working with schools to help build that kind of infrastructure. And what we think is the next big thing in e, in in esports in e in collegiate e esports is arenas. Our friends down in Florida uh, have, uh, is a company called Full Sail University incredible people. Joshua over there is a good friend of mine. And the thing about them is they built this arena, kind of like a real arena. It has round stadium seating where people can come in and see and watch it, video walls and all this stuff. And I think that's going to be the next big thing in eSports because you got all these big schools and they're competing to try to get the kids to come to their school. You know, you know, you go to, you know, Harrisburg University, there's 28 full run scholarships every year because they're trying to attract their best esports players to come to their school. Well, you know, what attracts kids, you know, if you're a football player, what attracts you to go to Texas A&M over some other school in, in New York? Well, it's the big Texas A&M stadium that, it, that attracts those kids. So I think a lot, of, a lot of schools are gonna start really building out real arenas like, like the Full Sail people and some other people who have done stuff. And I think that's gonna be the next step in the esports, and we're you know, and we're helping schools do that. We've done a lot of that, and we're going to do a lot more. So you're doing an incredible amount of, I would say, consulting then. Yeah. Um, for the hardware, um, the hardware solution, the data yeah. centers. I mean, we're, and we're, you know, I've been a broadcast engineer for over 30 years. I've built over 250 TV stations. I've built hundreds of production and post facilities. I've built some of the esports arenas out there. So me and my team have vast amounts of experience in this industry. And so that's what we kind of pivoted during the pandemic. And we're still doing that today. And we're working with a lot of schools to do that. Well, yeah. So the thing is, Jeff, here's the thing. So you're an engineer. Yes. You're a really smart guy. So tell me about the, the tell me, how did the circus branding come about? Um, you don't look like the average engineer. I don't know if anybody's ever told you this. I'm, yes, I, I'm, you know what? I'm letting Hawaiian it out of the shirts. bag. <laughs> <laughs> most of my engineers wear Hawaiian shirts and pocket protectors. No, I, I don't because I'm not your normal engineer. I have been a showman all my life. When I was a little kid, my mom used to take me out to the, to, you know, to, to the Hollywood Bowl. We used to, and, before, and I, used to, I used to dance and sing at the Hollywood Bowl while people were waiting for, for, for nickels and dimes. You know, I've always been a showman. I don't have, I don't, I can't play an instrument. I keep, and you don't want to hear me sing, but I can definitely put on a show. And I've always loved the, the magic and the wonder that the circus, I remember as a child and even as an adult, bringing the children that I, that I've mentored on part of the big brother program, 
and and, and, I, and the, the the light and the magic that's in someone's eyes when they go to this this, this circus act and and see go to the circus and experience what's under the big top is just magic. And I really wanted to bring that out, and we wanted to do it in a way that went to circus 2.0 you know so we bring all the great things of the circus and fill them up with all the great things that people like today like esports robotics virtual reality you know and all the experiences that come across with that i don't know if if there's a lot of circuses anymore um i mean well there are they just change what they do there's still there's still a lot of circuses most of them are acrobatic people the trapeze is still there and stuff like that. So you've got all the acrobats. There's one that does that does that does these ones with horses. That's really great. And uh, but most of it is like the acrobatic stuff, or you get like the Shin Yun, which is technically a circus. That and uh, the, you know the uh, Cirque du Soleil, which is still which is which is a which is a wonderful circus group that does acrobatics and incredible clowns and. And great things, and as, as what they technically are, just they they are a circus. Sure, and that I guess what I'm referring to is when I was growing up, there would be literally a circus that came to town, exactly. and it would be like an old, like let's just say, like an old Kmart or something parking lot, and overnight, you know, you would see that the. the the, you know, the trucks coming in and the circus starting to get set up and the, the, you know, the evolution of seeing the circus come to life and then the lights. And I just don't see that anymore. I'm in Chicago. So I'm in downtown. So I'm not sure if they do that anymore in the burbs. Well, well you just, you just wait until May of next year. We're going to bring the circus to South Chicago. We're coming to South Chicago, the Roma Sports Center in South Chicago and a, a fork, forklift, fork, I forget the name of the city, but it, it's South Chicago Rome, Roma Sports Center in mid-May, and we're gonna we're gonna have a whole thing with our trucks, and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna uh, we're gonna parade down the parade parade down fifty. Maybe we'll put a parade down fifty-seven. I don't know. We'll see. Well, <laughs> and, you know, I can feel the experience from you already, and your passion and your vision. It's it's just wonderful and you're a very very generous brilliant man and there's no question how do you get your inspiration because you're really stepping onto the court here out of the box you know you you, you you're always a just a, a joy and 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 a and a and just a bustling energy so what it what 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 keeps you going? What keeps you grounded? What keeps you, you in balance? Well, you know, uh, strong family. My mother was a big inspiration in my life. She, and in the past, my family had, a, and, and I have had some great inspiration in a woman called Eleanor Roosevelt. <laughs> Eleanor Roosevelt was a big inspiration to my, my grandmother took me to the Roosevelt Memorial when I was just eight years, to my 10 years old. And- That's in I, Illinois, isn't it? No, it's in Washington, D.C. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's a Roosevelt Memorial in Washington. There may one be in, in, in Illinois where, where, I, where think she was born the, here. I think that's where the library is, maybe. Oh, that's right. That's yes. where the library is. But mm -hmm. in Washington, D.C., there is a Roosevelt Memorial with, 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 with Mr. Roosevelt and a, and a bust of Mrs. Roosevelt, Eleanor. And under her statue was written the words, when you cease to make a contribution, you begin to die. When you mm. cease to make a contribution, you begin to die. And those words resonate throughout my life. And whatever I do, I've got to make a contribution. I've got to give back. I can't. I can make money doing anything, but I have to. Whatever I do has to do has to be good. Has to do good and be good, in order for me to really want to do it. And so that's what I did. Whether. It's when, whether it's with the with a few business with the businesses that I've run and successfully had, uh, whether it's in my philanthropic and volunteer aspects, with, you know, working with the Red Cross, Habitat for Humanity, you know, uh, this year I spent a lot of time volunteering at food banks uh, and being a part of the Big Brothers. You know, I've mentored five young men to manhood. Uh, whatever I do, whether it's you know volunteering in the industry with. I'm part of the, I'm, I'm on the board of the uh, Eastwards Trade Association, a wonderful part of my, I love being a part of that and all the great people that are part of it. 
And being a part of organizations, it's important that being part of organizations in your industry, because you can't just you can't just take take take. You've got to give. You've got to you've got to give back to people and organizations that make this industry better. I agree one hundred percent. And just you know, showing up dressed is you know right there exemplifies your generosity. And you know it's 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 really to me I receive it as a gift like every time I see you it's so exciting I've never seen you in the same thing twice I have a few outfits I have a bunch of hats here too I see Bowlers. that's amazing I have, I have this circus hat here <laughs> wow so I'm afraid to ask but I'm guessing you have more closets than me. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I'm like, I'm like the, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm like, I'm a Melda Marcos is my. If Melda Marcos wasn't a horrible person, I, she'd be my model. <laughs> wow. Well, you know, it's just been great, you know, having you on the show. I would love to, I would love to talk to you a little bit about why you joined the organization. Yeah. And you know how it's going for you. I know you know, we're, we're mid year after COVID. So I know you have some, some things in, in the fire, but, um, I'd love to, I'd love to learn, you know, how, how we got so fortunate to have you join. Well, we got so fortunate because this wonderful woman reached out to me at one point and said, <laughs> Jeff, come be a part of our family. And I looked into her eyes over zoom and said, I want to be a part of your family. And I, you know, I think my favorite thing with you guys is your your coffee, your your, co your members' coffee things. Those oh my are gosh. really good. Everybody Aren't gets they? a chance to really network and, and everyone gets a chance to, to 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 really experience each other in a really comfortable, you really you guys make it real comfortable. Oh, you know, that's so exciting to hear you say that because I remember when when we um when we had the idea to do the coffees and it was when we canceled our first conference here in Chicago in March. It was our launch. And we were so sad because it was COVID. Yeah. And um, we made it a virtual conference. And when we did the survey, people said they loved the coffee. And it was, it was just, it was just like so cool. All we did was have coffee. So I said, why don't we just do it once a month? And um you know, I, I remember people kind of looked at me like, hmm. And I said, you know what? I don't care if only one person comes once a month to have coffee together. Let's just do it. Absolutely. And I, it, it's, it's one of, I can't believe you said that because it's literally one of my favorite things about the yeah. entire association. I, I know. And, th and there's a lot of things in the association is, you know, you log in, um, you know, and there's all these resources where you want insurance or you want to, you want to get, uh, consulting help or this or that. There's so many resources in the portal. When you so when you log in as a member, a lot of things that you that you see in that portal is really helpful and and really supportive. Oh my gosh, I love the services. One of the things that I think is our like a secret, and I like we need to tell it more. Is I don't know if you even realize this, but every month, um, Roger Payne of YouGov and his committee, the research and data committee, they go through all the research that's put out on a monthly basis in the world yeah. and add it to our library that's signed, sealed and approved by the whole team. Yeah. So when you log into our research on, a, you know, you have the whole history of the greatest research that, you know, they put their stamp on. Yeah. And I, I've, I, used, I mean, I've used some of it. I, I've been using a lot of my mark. You know, I took some of that up from putting my marketing in, in the marketing that we're doing oh, that's right. for, for the events that we're doing. I mean, we're doing it. We're getting we're getting ready to do one in one in November, one October, one in November. And so we're, we're out there, you know, you know, getting people and stuff like that. So we're definitely I definitely use, you know, all the tools that you guys have in there. And then, you know, and then the only thing that's, I think, better than than really the, the breakfast is the incredible people I mean, the friendships that I've developed, you know, with Rick Starr and with all the other people that I've that I that I've met yes. at these at, you know through the through your group, the networking is 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 worth three or four times what I pay. Remember? Yeah, I agree. It's um, it's hard to even like 
I guess, yeah, I mean, you would definitely understand, like, how do we call this work? I don't punch in, I don't punch out, but I feel like I don't work an hour a day, but it's like I, ingrained in my whole life. There are certain things I tell you. I, I, one thing is I never want to go to work and I never want a customer. Oh, I never, yes. I, I, yeah, I will never have a customer. The Agreed. day I have a customer is the day I turn away. I only okay. have clients. Yes. You know, Best Buy has customers. People walk into Best Buy, they buy a mouse, they, they go home. Best Buy doesn't know you, doesn't care about you, doesn't have a relationship with you, nothing. I want them, everyone to walk through, walk through my circus tent, every student who plays on my stage, every person who comes through, who I, who I talk to at the, at, at the networking events through the trade association or other places, I want that to be a relationship. I want to have friendships and I want to create you know, partnerships and, 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 but I don't want to have customers. That's not a, a, what I'm at. That's not my business. And I don't want to have, you know, and I, and I, and I, and I, and I, I love the camaraderie and the, and, and the power that comes through that. Well, I mean, it's interesting you say that because how I fell in love with the membership model was yeah. when I worked at Reed El Savior, which was a publishing company. And we had three tiers. We had customers, clients, and members. Yeah. And that's when I fell in love with the membership model because it's taking customer to a whole nother level, which Absolutely. is family. And of our, we had 21 magazines under one roof that um, I worked in. And one magazine had a, cut, a, a membership model. And I fell in love with it. And members were even like, it was just one step up because they were literally paying to be there, which meant they were committed to the community. So, yeah. you know, just understanding that nuance of a relationship just sh is one of the reasons why you're here. And when people yeah. call me and they're like, what do you guys do? <laughs> I just get so excited to explain to them what, you know, what community and being part of a community is all about. And, and for some people, it's a completely new experience, Jeff, yeah. and they just can't even wrap their head around it. And, you know, it's been really, I don't mean to make this whole, you know, show about the esports trade association by any means, but having that, that really small um, monthly fee has really helped because people come in and yeah. check it out and they don't leave. Well, you know, if you look at anything, if you look at even the successful streamers, you look at successful people, everybody, the successful ones, you know, reach out to their, to their people who, who, who subscribe, subscribe and really give them membership benefits. People who treat their subscribers like a number don't end up with successful. And it's, you know, because people, people, it, People want to feel loved. They want to feel cared for. And when you create an organization like the Trade Association, and I don't mind talking about it a lot because it is important. And there are other ones that do the same, that do other things, that do similar sure. things too. You know, I, I find a lot of camaraderie in the, in the eSports Awards organization too. And there's a, there's a couple others. But when you have an organization like the eSports Trade Association and you guys treat your members like more than just somebody who pays a monthly due and you really go out and, out, out and strive out to find out how you can serve that person. That's what, that's what separates the difference between organizations that will be successful in the long run and those who will just, you know, go along the way and may not survive and, you know, and because they don't, you know, people, people do respect it, you know? And, and we, can really feel like, like I remember growing up, my mom used to say, don't lie. People yeah. know she's, she was just so basic. She was like, just tell the truth. People can yeah. feel, uh, you know, just, just be you, just be straight, just be authentic, just yeah. say what you want. And you know, that that's been a discipline of mine, just keeping my heart right. And my head, right. And my body, right. You know, it's, you know, it's, it, it takes something. I mean, during COVID, oh my gosh. Yeah. Even here in Chicago, our, our gym was closed. I mean, we had to really get creative to uh, sometimes like we weren't even allowed to walk our, our, our 
lakefront was closed. Yeah. We couldn't even get like here in Chicago, it was, it was rough. I spent a lot of time going up our stair and down our staircase. We have 20 flight I'm 20 flights up, Wow. you know, just to, just to, you know, stay healthy and, yeah. um, you know, what, a, what a, what a testament our society has, has all made and come together through such a time. And I'm so looking forward to your, your circus spreading through our, our, our nation. Yeah. I want, I want to franchise this thing out eventually and have it all over the world and stuff like that. So, and we're creating, we're going to, and hopefully next year, we're actually planning on a big thing next year. Uh, I'm so excited about it because it's, it's, it, it, this came up and we've got these four Loche Libre wrestlers who want to bring us down to Mexico and do a big giant esports event in Mexico city. And so we're going to be talking with the city mayor of Mexico and uh, all that stuff. And we're going to hopefully do a big giant event there, which will, which will launch us into the international esports event company. But yeah, yeah. so it's going to be great. We're going to do really wonderful things. And I'm so excited about, you know, you know, I know you don't want to talk to it too much, but I really, I'm really excited about the conference that's coming up later this year. Yeah, so are we. Um, yeah. I, 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 I'm. It's so great, great to have you on the committee helping us. I, um, I, yes, I, I hope that that. Well, you're, you're definitely coming, right? It's September absolutely. 12th or I'll 15th. be there. Absolutely, I'll be there. I mean, we're we're we're. It's so important. You know, I mentioned to you we were talking before the for the meeting. I said, you know, one of the things that I want to talk about is how important it is these in person meetings. You know, people who say, oh. I may not go back to, you know, I've been doing virtual conferences and I may not go back to person. There is something so genuine and so more powerful about being in right next, right in front of somebody and negotiating and talking business and doing all that stuff. And places like the Esports Trade Association, the, the Esports Business Summit, uh, you know, all these different conferences, they do great things by having people in person. That's and I right. know it's and, and I know it's an expense. You get the hotel, you get the flight, and you get the food and, and all that stuff. But it, you know, it it is worth it. I have built so many lasting relationships and made so much more money when I talk to people in person. You know, we we've done booths to trade shows before, and having a having having someone come by your booth and really connect with you and all that stuff, and you sit down and talk about things, it's so much better. And like you said, the at the convention you had the coffees just those the coffees or the having breakfast together it's just so much better than a zoom thing you know first of all not that many people know how to zoom correctly you know most people are zooming with bad cameras they have True. bad lighting they're doing they, they, they have the you know with their cameras going you know like you know they're like where they're like um, oh wow you are fancy you know, well, I mean, they're like, um, so they're like making their the cameras go a halfway face. And sure. Like that. You know, you know, you got to position yourself so that you, uh, so, that, so that, so that, you know, you're centered in the camera, you're, you're not too much headroom, you know, all these things. People don't do that. People just get in front of the camera and go, oh, okay. And they're the t-shirts, the dirty t-shirts and they're, you know, and this and that. And it's just, dude, you're, you want to be a business person, you know, <laughs> you know, dress, Dress nicely, comb your hair, brush your teeth, wear clothes. <laughs> the, basics. the basics. I will never forget the first time that we had our meeting and how quickly you followed up with me. And in your signature, you had the most impressive pitch I've ever seen. Thank you. Tell me a little bit about how you did that. I mean, everything you do, you really dot the I's and cross the T's and it's really well done. Yeah, um, we, we, we put a video, I put a video, we actually have two video pitches on my signature, my 90, 90 second investor pitch and my three minute video explainer. And I used to have a company, actually, I still have a company with my partner, who's my partner in the eSports circus. But we used to have a company called LaunchNet. And what we did is we, we used to, for startup companies, we used to create video pitch decks for them so that they can post them online in their, you know, either in their Indigo programs or in, you know, on, on, on investor portal sites and stuff like that. You know, if you're giving a pitch to investors, 
you know, you want to do a, you want to do your PowerPoint standard thing because that's what they want to see. They want to see a PowerPoint. That's what the investors want to see. But when you leave the investor and they've got that PowerPoint and they don't got an, and they don't got you to explain it, a lot of times these PowerPoints lose their power because they don't, they're not really explained well. But when you have a video explainer that that's that's produced correctly by professional production people and professional equipment and has a story to tell, engages it and is perfectly timed. That makes all the difference in the world. And I've seen a lot of companies get funded because they have that perfect video pitch. And that we include that on all, on all our, on all, it's in my part of my signature. Yeah, it's really, it's really well done. And I spend a lot of time with members and I, I think you've been part of some of these conversations that we do the, the, the elevator pitch at our conference and we did it virtually and we'll be doing it again here in September live. Um, and, you know, it's really vital to be able to pitch your business in 90 seconds and the video can be, um, well, maybe overwhelming for people to take on, you know, even the, even the 90 second pitch, um, you know, and getting it down. So do you, are you still offering that service? We, we still do. We still do. We still offer the, 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 the launch net service and we still do that. We had to pull it back because the production studio had to shut down for a while because we couldn't, with COVID restrictions, we couldn't have people in our production studio. Uh, so it was, but we're launched, we launched that down. We've done a couple of, of, of pitches for some companies recently. Um, and we're, so we're starting that up out. Uh, we, you know, but you gotta, you know, when people do pitches, a lot of times, you know, the best person to pitch a video is not necessarily the person who's running the company. You know, the people, you know, some, you know, it's hard for some people to realize that the best person to pitch the company may not be the person who started the company because he may be the, the most best engineer and talk engineering talk. And, but he's not, ta- he's not a trained sales. He's not trained how to sell, a, sell his idea. Right. Or you get people and they, you know, I, I've gone to in-person investor pitches and the guy's like, uh, yeah, he's looking at his shoes. You know what I mean? You know, he's looking at his shoes. He's not looking at the people talking or he's not answering the, the questions properly. I mean, when you have a properly produced video pitch and it's asking and it's answering the questions the investor people want to know, it's how are you going to make money? What's your exit strategy? You know, uh, what, you know, what are you, who are your competition? What do you do differently than everything? You know, and you know, how much, when am I going to get my money back? You know, there's, there's really specific questions. And my, my partner, Don Montoya, who's an angel accredited angel investor, who's had six successful exits of companies, brought companies, brought a, a bunch of companies to IPO, including a company called Hire Car, that's a great company and different companies like that. He, he knows the marketing and the, and all that, all that, all the technical stuff that, you, that an investor wants to know. He's an expert at that. And then I'm an expert at the production part and the, you know, capturing the video and the audio and all that stuff. And, the, and we have script writers and we have a whole team that does, that, that does it all for you. And it's really, really, really worth, really worth it. Yeah. And I think, you know, where I find it fascinating, I, I, I just love people's brands. You know, your brand is clearly defined um, and um, clearly, and you know, just being, being and discovering and communicating your brand, that is a journey in itself. So it's like, there's that development of your business plan, your one pager, your, the development of your pitch, your logo, your branding, your vision, your mission, all that is so fun and fascinating to me. Yeah. Uh, and that is like why this podcast part of it came to fruition because I was like, I have to share these stories with members, you know, with the world, with whoever wants to hear it. Cause it's, it's so interesting to me and, and other people, I I hope find it interesting because I sure do. And, um, what a, what a great resource that you offer. Are you by chance, um, in our buyer's guide as a consultant, because I know that we're going to be people are going to be asking me about this pitch. Like it's coming <laughs> and yeah. it's, you know, I think, I think, the- I think it definitely, I think we should, I, I don't know if we're in it for that. I know we're in it for the esports circuits. I don't think I put it for the launch net uh, because we just started getting started on this on, on launch, relaunching the launch net uh, company that we started. Uh, but several years ago, my partner and I started several years ago when we saw this problem with people 
not being able to really pitch correctly to investors. Um, so I, I, I would love, I probably should add it. Probably should add it. Talk to my partner. Yeah. So, well, one thing, one thing you could do um, is you can put your name in the buyer's okay. guide as a consultant. Yeah. And when people go to the consulting consultant listing, which is just like the yellow pages of, um, of esports, they'll go, Oh, I wonder what, you know, Jeff is consulting about. And then, you know, you can write a little something as to what you're consulting about, yeah. because this is something that, that I know that there's a demand for, um, even, you know, even the coaching and the conversation and the practicing of the pitch. I mean, it's, it's, it's definitely an area. And, and I think like you graduate when you do do your 90 second pitch, didn't we do a whole coffee uh, chat about this? We didn't talk about this. We did talk about the, about the investor, about the investor pitching and stuff like that. We did talk about that. I don't, it wasn't on like making any video pitch. I don't think so, but uh, yeah. Okay. So when it comes to virtual meetings, the best thing at Esports Trade Association, in my opinion, by far is our coffees. You nailed it. My favorite part of, of any conference I've ever done is the elevator pitch. Yeah. It is so exciting. And um, I, I don't know if you're part of that planning or you're going to be a pitcher, but um, I've seen hundreds of people pitch. I've seen people get funded. Um, it's been a lot of fun. Mark Cuban has been to conferences that we've led with elevator pitches, bought three companies while he stopped by. Wow. Um, it, oh yeah, it's, it's, it, you know, it, and we, the neat part is we don't have a lot of rules for our pitch. It's uh -huh. 90 seconds, no video, no PowerPoint, tell your story in 90 seconds. And, um, I, it, who wins the audience judges is always a surprise for me too. You just, you never know. You just don't. Yes, I, I agree. I agree. It's, you know, it's, it's always surprising because you think, you think, oh, this guy is, this guy has this idea. And that guy, that guy it. but you know, sometimes the, the winners really surprise you. They come out with from left field and they have this idea and it's, but to me, the ones that can do it are the ones that really nail down their pitch and look at what the investors want to hear, not what you want to tell. That's true. I'll tell you, this is the key. Many people get out there and talk about the features of their, of, of, of their, of their, of their program. An investor doesn't care anything about the features. I don't, if I'm an investor, I don't care anything about your features. All I want to know is what's the value proposition. If you talk about features, my product can do this. My product can do that. My product can do, there's a thousand products that can do that. You know, if your product is the only one that does this, then I don't want to invest in it because there's no, there's no market for it. So there's already 50 other people that do, that do the same thing that you do. But when you talk about the value proposition, that is what gets investors excited. So come out, the one that gets out there and articulate, articulates the value proposition of their IP, of you know, their system, whatever it is, that's the one that's gonna get that investor excited and have them funded. I mean, you are spot on and that is the bullseye to winning. And here's what I tell everyone. If you pitch, you will win. Hard work and good luck go hand in hand. Getting up there, getting on the stage and just going, getting on court, you know, get in the game, get See, off the, get off the bleachers. You miss a, you miss a hundred percent of the free throws you don't take, right? That's right. That's right. And you know, like honestly the winner does surprise me almost always um but it's you know everybody wins when they pitch in my Absolutely. opinion because even if you even if you learn what you did what you did what you can do better next time that's still that's winning. right you know I, you know edison, edison said you know it doesn't you know we all know edison said you know i i, I never failed i learned a thousand ways not to do not to, to you know not to do this not to do it the wrong way well that's the same way when you get out there and you pitch and you can and you feel how the audience is reacting and you hear back from the from the investors you know that's it. i would say another thing that i see a lot of pitchers do when they when they get out there they argue with 
the investor, the investor, the investor comes back and makes a comment and they go, no, I didn't do that. I, 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 I just and tries to justify themselves. Don't do that. Don't <laughs> do that. Say, thank you so much, sir. I was an incredible idea. I'm going to take that and I'm going to, I'm going to implement it in my next pitch. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Cause the whole thing is a journey and experience. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's really nice that, that, you know, um, that we were able to discuss that, that you have this, um, wonderful, um, part of one of your companies that can help people, you know, get to this. Cause it, it's certainly a passion of mine to help put legs to people's visions. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Wow. So any parting advice? I mean, it's just always a pleasure to talk to you. Yeah. I mean, I can say I'm, I'm so happy to be a part of the organization and to make a contribution back to it as I can as part of the committee to help this re create the conference that we're going to have. And it's going to be a fabulous conference. And I recommend everybody, it's not hugely expensive to come to this thing, you know, and, you know, it, it, it'll, it'll pay off in dividends when you when you do this and just and just you know it, i'll tell you anyone out there if you want to come to one of our coffee things contact me jeff at esportsurface.com just email me jeff at esportsurface.com and don't tell megan but i'm going to bring it as my guest so, i we we encourage it i know we I'm want, oh yeah I, we we want everybody's so invited email me they are i'll bring you as my guest to one of our uh, one of our members lunch one of members members meetups and the members coffees you come, you'll see, you'll, you'll fall in love with Megan as I did. I oh. mean, I, I love this woman. We had a we had a great talk the other day. We shared memories of our families. It was it was incredible. And I'm going to tell you all: if you want to be a part of the esports circus, you go to esportscircus.com. See all the things that we're doing. Uh, we'll, we'll be in North Carolina in October. We'll be in in Garden Grove, California, in November next year. We're going to be in South Chicago in May. We'll be July 4th, we'll be in Daytona, Florida. Hopefully we'll be down in Mexico next year as well. We're planning. And one of the things that we're planning to do that you, if people want to be a part of it is to really change the way broadcasting is done for eSports. Right now, there are 913 million YouTube channels and there are 94 million Twitch channels out there. And I'm not going to compete with those guys. Those guys do a great job doing what they're doing. But there's almost nothing being produced in the in the broadcast world, if you go to HBO or Netflix or Amazon, type esports, you see a few documentaries, you see some maybe some movies that have esports as a little tiny part of it. You know, the biggest esports movie was you know Ready Player One type of thing, or you know, and so but there's really no esports movies out there or TV shows. There's none TV shows, and we're going to be producing a lot of stuff. So if anybody wants to be a part of that be a part of the magic that we're doing. We're hiring people. We're going to get great stuff. Just contact us, jeff at esportscircus.com. Go to esportscircus.com and let, let's talk. Let's talk. What a great name too, esportscircus.com. Yeah. I mean, good for you for, for you know, getting that real estate, um, you know. I know. I know, really. Well, it's been a pleasure. Um, my favorite ringmaster in the whole world, Jeffrey Weiss, thank you for joining us. Thank and you, I'm Megan. your humble host, Megan Van Petten, another great episode of Esports Connected. We'll all see right. you all next time. Bye, everybody.